Patel Philippe is one of the largest luxury brands in the world. It's one of the first brands that pop up into your mind when you think of a luxury watch, and some of its products have been branded as the most expensive in history. Drake, Ed Sheeran, Victoria Beckham, and some of the biggest celebrities in the world have been seen donning a Patek Philippe. But did you know the fascinating history behind this brand? Today, we'll be taking a look at how a homeless refugee founded one of the most iconic brands in the world. Let's dive in. Antony Patek was born in 1812 in the village of Piaski Szlachetski near the city of Lublin in Poland. His life was always turbulent. At just 10 years old, Patek moved with his parents to Warsaw, but his father died shortly after in 1828. While Patek was growing up, his homeland was under the occupation of Prussia. It's described as one of the toughest periods in the history of Poland, and unsurprisingly, there was a lot of resistance against the occupiers. At the age of 16, Patek joined the Polish 1st Mounted Rifles Regiment and fought in the Polish November Uprising against Russian rule, during which he was wounded twice. For his heroic attitude, on the 27th of February 1831, he was promoted to the rank of 2nd Lieutenant in the 1st August Brigade, and later that same year, he was decorated with Virtuti Militari Golden Cross. When the uprising came to an end and ended up as a failure, Patek was under the threat of being executed by the Prussian military and had to emigrate like many other officers and soldiers. In 1832, he took part in organizing an evacuation route for Polish insurgents through Prussia to France. He was appointed with a command over a staging point in Bamberg, near Munich. After successfully completing his mission, Patek settled in France, where he lived in cities like Cahors and Amiens, working as a typesetter. He generally blended in well into French culture. He was in a much richer country, and he was always fascinated by the sheer amount of money and luxury that average French people often flaunted around him. Patek's stay in France was cut short when a decree issued by the French government under pressure from the Russian embassy forced many former insurgents, including Patek, to resettle in Switzerland. This meant that Patek had to become a refugee once again, and he left France. In order to make this transition, Patek had to sell off almost all his possessions. He was able to salvage a few items, including some watches he had purchased in France, which would become the start of his watchmaking business with Chapek. Once he arrived in Switzerland, Patek started making connections with other watchmakers and craftsmen in the area, which would lay the foundation for his future business. He also began trading with liquors and wines in Versoix near Geneva to make ends meet. He also attended painting courses given by the famous Swiss painter and engraver Alexander Kalam. After a period of time in Paris, Patek caught the attention of the famous Moreau family of Versoix, who encouraged him to pursue his passion for making expensive pocket watches once they got to know of some of his talents. Patek was a man of great taste, and he made the right friends, so despite all of the hardships, things were starting to go his way. The Moreau family was very supportive of him. They knew he had a talent. He generally spent a lot of time at their house, and during that time, he would meet some of the richest people in Switzerland. On one occasion, he met a particularly wealthy heiress, Elizabeth Thomason Denizart. She was from a fabulously wealthy family herself, and the two hit it off quite well. They were apparently enamored by one another, and it wasn't long before the two tied the knot as well. Patek's life changed for the better when he met Francois Chapek, another Polish refugee living in Switzerland, in 1839, and the two of them decided to go into business together. Despite their humble beginnings, this partnership was the start of something special, as it laid the foundation for one of the world's most iconic luxury brands, Patek Philippe. Patek began trading in expensive pocket watches, which he bought from watchmakers in Geneva. He then had them decorated by goldsmiths, engravers, enamelers, and miniaturists of the time. He attached the highest importance to both the quality and artistic value of work and soon found a market for his creations. Patek began designing watches himself, and in 1845 established Patek, Chapek & Co., a watch manufacturer in Geneva. The company quickly gained success due to their innovative designs and superior craftsmanship. They sold their products around the world, and became particularly popular in Russia, with many members of the imperial family owning Patek watches. They also experimented with different materials, such as gold, silver, and enamel, making each watch unique. 
Patek and his partner worked perfectly together. Patek was a talented craftsman who had already gained recognition for his design and technical innovations, while Chapek had the strong business acumen required to run a successful enterprise. However, as the two became more successful, they also started disagreeing with each other more. Eventually, the two couldn't even find a way to work with each other, so Chapek packed his bags and found another designer, while Patek stayed on his own. This would officially be the end of Patek, Chapek & Co. In the meantime, another watchmaker was starting to get some attention in the luxury world. Adrien Philippe was a French watchmaker renowned for his invention of the winding and setting mechanism. He was born in 1815, and at a young age, he began to demonstrate an interest in mechanics and technology. After a few years of apprenticeship under two different watchmakers, Philippe became a master clockmaker. In 1842, he invented the keyless winding and setting mechanism for watches, allowing them to be wound and set with a simple crown. This invention earned him a bronze medal at the French Industrial Exposition of 1844 World's Fair. In addition to this patent, Philippe is also credited with many other inventions in watchmaking, including an improved escapement as well as a new type of balance wheel. He is also credited with adapting the lever escapement to pocket watches, which allowed them to keep better time than ever before. Philippe became an esteemed member of the French watchmaking community, and was eventually appointed head of the top school for watchmakers in France. It would be at the World's Fair where Philippe would meet Patek. It was clear that both of these men had very similar minds. While Philippe was a world-renowned engineer at the time, Patek was one of the most esteemed designers in Europe. Because of the fact that they were both in the same industry, they decided to collaborate with each other and eventually form the company we all know and love today, Patek Philippe. Patek Philippe & Co. was officially registered as a company in Switzerland in 1851, and it wasn't long before the company caught the attention of the most powerful person in the world. That's right, in the same year it became an official company, Queen Victoria, a woman who ruled over a third of the world, became interested in Philippe's keyless winding mechanism. When a watch was presented to her by the two partners, she was pretty pleased by it, and that's taking it lightly. It was a keyless pendant watch that became an instant success, due to its exquisite craftsmanship and attention to detail. The face of the watch was enameled with Art Nouveau motifs, and sparkling rose-cut diamonds were set in a floral pattern around the circumference of the casing. The mechanism was powered by a mainspring, and it featured an improved escapement as well as a newly invented type of balance wheel that allowed for more accurate timekeeping than ever before. Queen Victoria loved it so much that it became one of her most famous pieces, and she became a regular customer at her local Patek Philippe store. Because of the intricate designs, the patented technology, and the high-profile customers, this brand quickly became a symbol, if not the symbol, of Swiss watchmaking, and suddenly anyone who was anyone had to have one of these. Both Patek and Philippe would live to see their company turn into a success. Antony Patek would eventually pass away in 1877 at the age of 64. None of his children wanted to take over his position, so Adrian Philippe would take over the entire thing. Philippe found himself unable to continue day-to-day -day operations due to his old age in his late 70s, so he decided to hand the company over to his son, Joseph Emile Philippe, in 1891. He passed away in 1894. The company would stay with the Philippe family for two more generations but after the Great Depression, it would be acquired by the Swiss Stern family, who own the company to this day. 